Mother Sharon. If you're reading this, then something has happened to me. You're on your own now. Don't try to find me. And whatever you do, don't go to Silent Hill. Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I'm Ashley Sledge. And I'm Ken Sledge. And let's defend horror. So today we are joined by the amazing Tom of The Green Man. How are you doing today, brother? Hi, Ken. Yep, doing good, thanks. Ready for this episode. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, but before we start, we want people, because this is your first time being on the channel, we would like for the people that don't know you to get to know you a little bit, my friend. Um, you run the YouTube channel, The Green Man. You do everything from horror reviews. Uh, I saw you did the Saw ranking. We watched that. You also do heavy metal album reviews. Um, so what what got you started in wanting to do the channel, and what gave you the desire and the drive to actually make it a reality? Yeah, so I somewhat um, decided I needed a new hobby during the COVID lockdowns. Back in 2020, I think I started the same time as quite a few other people did as well, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that whole COVID period when people were maybe looking for other things to do and to connect with people in a new and different way. So I thought, well, I've got to do something uh, maybe here to try something new, challenge myself a bit. And uh, I have, you know, quite a few different interests. So I thought, uh, really, for YouTube, I should really focus in on one thing, shouldn't I, really, mm -hmm. to, to, you know, to get the... You know, I guess the uh, that's what people do usually to get the engagements and things. But I was like, it reflects me more as a person to um, talk about all the things I like. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to throw in horror, going to throw in fantasy. These are the things I love. Um, so, you know, as well as talking about things like, you know, obviously a lot of the channel is talking about rock and metal um, mm -hmm. and music generally, I suppose. And what, what I love about that is um, we kind of backed ourselves into a corner with sledgehammer horror I, we, we kind of made our niche what it was we should have went with sledgehammer entertainment yeah or something but, like that but we we love horror enough yeah, that we I, can just talk about that we can i mean we're busy <laughs> enough with just talking about horror so right. um but what i love about your channel like you said a lot of people try to find their niche and they go with that your niche doesn't have to be just one thing no not you know, at all. you're a fan of a lot of different things you want to review a bunch of different things like i said we just watched your saw franchise ranking and your judas priest uh album review right before we were doing this because you know we want to kind of get a feeling of who you are as a person too and we love what you do man mm -hmm. uh, you're genuine you're honest you're not trying to butter up anybody you're just genuine you're real and you talk about what you want to talk about and uh, i'm very excited to see what the channel has to offer and here in the future guys you're going to want to be a part of that family too so we have all of his social media links and his youtube link right in the description so please Make sure you're subscribing to the YouTube. Make sure you're following him on social media so you can stay up to date on everything he has coming up for us down the road. Because I promise you, movie reviews aren't stopping and neither are heavy metal album reviews. <laughs> so if those are your thing you love to see, go and follow him and subscribe right now. Absolutely. Tom, will you tell everybody what movie we are defending today? I am defending Silent Hill Revelation. Yes. This movie is not very liked um not by the critics at least <laughs> so or the audience really as always we like to use rotten tomatoes as kind of our line just because it's the universal line that we can go off of this movie has an eight percent tomato meter and a 35 percent audience score so mm -hmm. like i said the critics the audience are not big fans of the movie and as reading those, some of our major criticisms that we saw were... Um, some of them were weak characters, shortage, shortage of scares, um, has nothing to do with the first movie or the video game franchise, which I can't... I don't really know because I've never played the game, so I can't really um, say anything about that. I think this movie ties in a lot to the third video game, actually. Yeah. I, I think that it does have a lot... It has, like, a lot of the Pink Bunny Easter eggs. Um, so, I mean, I don't get that argument, yeah. but... Um, they said the fight scene was weak. Um, the 3D direction was annoying and cliche and looks terrible in 2D. Um, bad CGI. The climax was weak. And you don't get the spooky spine tingling feeling the game achieved. These are the things that um, I seen mostly in the, the criticism aspect. Some of them I completely, completely agree with. The 3D. Yes. I, I get that. You know how I feel about yeah. that. Um, but like I said, with the video game aspect of it, I don't want it to be beat for beat what the video game was. So I like the fact that they took a lot of the, they mishmashed a lot of Silent Hill 1, 2, and 3 into this movie. So why does this movie mean so much to you, Tom? Yeah, well, actually, um, it took a while for this film to really grow on me because I got this a physical copy of it 
probably about the year after the film was actually released to theatres. Um, mm -hmm. And I think I got it as a gift. So I watched it once. I didn't really like it very much. So I thought, oh, that's kind of disappointing. Went back to it probably a year or two later and realised, actually, I'm kind of having fun with this film. This is kind of yeah. entertaining. I quite like it. It has uh, some cool monster sequences. Um, mm. It has some, you know, entertaining scenes. And you kind of learn to laugh at the goofy, um, ridiculous lines. Some of the ridiculous lines, I think, mm. are in this film, which I think a lot are from the character Vincent. Mm. Um, and uh, <laughs> not just to single him out, there's plenty of uh, plenty of other not so good lines in the film as well. But And the yeah. story as well is, is kind of... Um, full of plot holes, I think, uh, a few which I will probably come to mention. But why I love this film so much, I think, is more its entertainment value. And um, I actually really like the performance of the lead in this film, Adelaide Clemens. For me, mm -hmm. I realised the more I watched this film, the more I realised that she actually does a really good job with what she has. Mm -hmm. like yeah. the dialogue, and I think she manages to stay convincing in a film, which I think without her would be quite a bit weaker without her performance mm -hmm. in this movie. And I, I kind of, you know, with the fun aspects of that, with Adelaide Clemens's performance um, and just the sort of the fun factor in this film that I get from it, I have to kind of remove my Silent Hill expectations because, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, if you go into this film wanting a sort of, um, you know, uh, to be very much in the atmosphere of the Silent Hill games, I think you're going to be a bit disappointed. Although, as Ken says, there are elements of Silent Hill 3. Uh, in this film with like the main character Heather um so there are there is still some crossover with it uh, so mm -hmm. I don't completely buy the fact it's completely not Silent Hill um but it, it has a lot of issues I think mainly with its story but I, I defend it on the basis of entertainment value I think mostly yeah mm -hmm. absolutely and you know people that want to complain about how it's not like the video game uh, the first Silent Hill movie wasn't very much like the first Silent Hill game either. Yeah, you know, I I did see in the criticisms that people do like this one better than the first one. It's I've heard like, that a lot. Yeah, I've heard that this is what more well received throughout the community than the original. But again, I I don't hate either one of these movies. I'm mm -hmm. with you, Tom. I can have fun with these movies. The older I've gotten, you know, I, if you ask 21 year old me how he thought about this he'd have been furious you're you yeah, know you're a little more cynical back then <laughs> yeah well because silent hill 2 was my favorite what well up until silent hill 4 the room was released because that is hands down my favorite silent hill game i think that game is a masterpiece silent hill 2 was always a soft spot for me so when i went into this i was kind of hoping for that yeah. too but um you know th this movie is it is a lot of fun it's oh yeah a, it's a i blast. agree with that um tom what are some of your favorite moments from this movie Oh, you know what? There are there are quite a few actually. I, I really like the um, one of the early scenes when Heather's having some visions in the shopping mall, and she goes into a kitchen, and there's this guy with a carving knife um, cutting off some of the skin from his chest whilst he's hanging upside down in this horrible like uh, wearing a mask and stuff. And it, it just mm -hmm. it's just a kind of good horror scene. I think I was a bit like, oh, that's nasty, you know? Yeah, you know, absolutely sadistic. But yeah, I thought that was quite a good horror scene. Mm -hmm. um, and I like it when um, Douglas Cartland, who is played by Martin Donovan, he's not in the film long enough for me. I would have liked to have seen more of him in this film. He gets his fingers cut yeah. off by the monster. I like that scene. Um, mm -hmm. I like the, um, I really like the monster, the mannequin monster scene. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Like the spider. It, it's a bit yeah. like a spider, the way it takes its form. And um, I really like that whole sequence. I think that's actually really well done. Um, yeah, that spider is so creepy. <laughs> another favorite moment, a lot of them are monster moments, you know, the pyramid head when he just chops off all the arms that are reaching out through the cell bars, you know, I thought that was great. A really yeah. enjoyable moment as well. And some favorite moments are also the lines, the goofy, the cheesy lines, the cringy lines that make me laugh as well mm -hmm. and i kind of watched this film back just to get a bit of a laugh out of those two um right. yeah but uh yeah i'll save those for a bit later man <laughs> <laughs> well i mean and you know you're talking about um how short he's in it the detective and also the grandpa you know he's i can't think of um the guy that put is it malcolm mcdowell that plays the grandpa the, the crazy grandpa yeah um malcolm. what um both of those guys like they both could have had much bigger roles and i'd have been a lot happier i don't yeah. know why i couldn't think of malcolm mcdonald mm -hmm. that was driving me nuts but um when you have 
both of those guys that are well-known horror actors, especially having these minor roles. It's cool, you know, see them be like, oh, shit, you know, but then to go off and see them go off so quickly off screen and die is mm-hmm. kind of a bummer, but. Um, but the way Malcolm McDowell died was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, the, I, yeah. I, I enjoyed that, yeah. Th- that was sick. Well, well, let's let's segue that. Let's do it. You know, we're talking about kills, and obviously as horror fans, we'd love the kills. Uh, which kill was your favorite in the movie, Tom? Um, I think it was the one, it's a tricky, tricky one, actually, but I think it's the one where um, Heather or Sharon, or whatever we're calling it, yeah. um, is in the sort of, I think it's like a boiler room. She's with the mannequin spider thing. Mm-hmm. And um, you get introduced to a girl. She's like the equivalent of a Star Trek red shirt in this movie. You know, she's just introduced yeah. for a couple of minutes and then she's killed off. And I, but I really liked the way that um, she kind of gets pulled out of that vent by the, by the mannequin spider. It's, I just think it's quite a good kill. There is another one as well, which is pretty disturbing. I mean, the way it kills its, uh, its sort of victims, turning them into mannequins. Yeah. Uh, and they gradually turn and, and then it twists off their heads and puts on hand and they're still conscious and aware and i just think that's a horrible way to go isn't it just being mm-hmm. having your head twisted off removed as a oh it's just and you're still aware of it <laughs> and you become part of this monster at that oh, point monster like oh man I, I agree i love the transition too from them going to like a human into like the mannequin mm-hmm. i thought that looks pretty good actually yeah i, I didn't hate that yeah. you know because like i said obviously we wanted to give this movie its due justice because we haven't seen it in years yeah so we obviously went when you said this is the film that you wanted to defend we were like well let's let's go watch it again mm-hmm. and again i don't remember disliking it as much as i you know i don't remember liking it as much as i did i should say i remember yeah. disliking it a lot more but like you said this is a movie that you can have fun with mm-hmm. you don't got to use too much brain power you sit back yeah. you watch it you have fun you know, it's not going to win any awards. It's not going to be a masterpiece, but there are way worse films in the world yeah, than Silent Hill Revelation. I like a lot of the monsters. They're terrifying looking. Mm-hmm. Um, Tom, so I know you said that the dialogue is, is cheesy at times, but do you have any like um, one-liners that you like or favorite quotes? Um, I, I kind of like it because I just find it funny when uh, Vincent is revealing who he is. Um, to Heather when he kind of turns around to her and says, Because I am a child of the order. And it kind of, the music changes, and it's just, yeah. it's kind of, it's pretty bad, but it, it just makes me laugh whenever he says that in the film. Yeah. You know? And, and just, like you said, the way it's so dramatic. It is. It's so uh, over-dramatized. <laughs> it is very dramatic. And it's so, it's like you've seen it coming, like, you, you could definitely tell, like, there's something going on with this guy. Right. You always have that, you know. What what's his end game? Yeah. Well, you know what what's yeah. he gonna do here? Yeah. There's, you know? it's there's kind of creepy. Else. It's kind of creepy the way he goes after Heather a bit, isn't it? That he's always following yeah. her around, and you know he sort of says goodbye to her when she's quite a distance away, and then suddenly he's at her door like a few yeah. minutes later. I think I heard you screaming. Like, yeah, I heard you screaming. How could he hear her screaming from all that way away? <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry, he had his he had his ear up against the yeah. door. Sorry, you dropped something on the way out. What? My jaw. <laughs> I had to come back and pick it up. Um. So yeah, again, like he's one of those characters. And again, I'm, we're not bashing actors or actresses yeah, in any way. Please understand that, guys. That's not who we are. That's not what we do. But you can tell when they're given something and they go, you know what? I got to spice this up just for my own entertainment, mm-hmm. just to keep myself sane. You know, I've, I've accepted this role. I'm reading the script. How can I make this unique and make this memorable? So, you know, good for him, yeah. you know, for me. Because like yeah. you said, I am a child. That's one of those lines where you're like, okay, that was goofy, <laughs> but I'm not going to, I'm right. going to remember that line 100%. Yeah, I mean, I actually love, I love Kit Harrington. Obviously, I know him most for Game of Thrones, like most people. And, you sure. know, I guess this film was maybe before Game of Thrones thinking about it. Oh, yeah. It. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I mean, I, I, I can see, you know, it's a Silent Hill film, a big franchise. You can see he just maybe wanted to jump at the opportunity and do it, um, which I can kind of understand. For it. Mm-hmm. Even though I wouldn't, I would, I would accept that phone call any day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, hell yeah. yeah, let me in it. I get to say that I'm in the Silent Hill universe, even yeah. if it wasn't good. I'm still a part of that universe. Let, exactly. anybody, if anybody out there is watching, I will be Henry in Silent Hill for the room. I promise I'll knock it out of the park for you because that's my favorite. I want to be one of those the nurses. I love those nurses, how they, they can't. What make... were the noises they were making? Oh, they were making some noises. <laughs> I was hoping to get you to make one. <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> um, so we talked about some of the things that you love about this movie, Tom, and what this movie means to you. But obviously, there's no such thing as a perfect movie. Even if we love a movie so much, we can still find flaws in it. So 
what would you say your biggest criticism of Silent Hill Revelations is? I think my biggest criticism is probably the story and the way it's sequenced and the way things don't really make a lot of sense and the way it sort of doesn't really even follow on, um, you know, very well from the first film too, with Alessa's yeah. role kind of changing. You know, she was burnt. I thought she was burnt to purge her of her sins. But in this film, it changes. It's, she's being burnt because of them wanting to impregnate her with a god or this demon or something. So things like that. And then like the the way the the seal of the Metatron or whatever it is, the role of that seems to change as it suits the story in the film. And there's just elements of the story which just don't really kind of make much sense. It's not why I watched this film, though. Even then, that's probably why that's my biggest criticism in a way, because that's not what I enjoy about the film. I don't watch yeah. this film to, to follow a linear story. I watch it to enjoy it purely, pretty much. Okay. And I agree with you. And, um, you know, the big thing is, like, if this would have been its own standalone, I think it would have been more, it would have been received a little better. But since you are following up the first Silent Hill movie with this, and you even retconned the ending of the first movie. Yeah. You know, the you completely retconned what happened with Dark Alessa yeah. in that movie, in this movie. So when you're going with a continuation like that, it's really hard to just be like, oh, this is what we're doing now, and this is why. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, this franchise is supposed to be getting rebooted. Yeah, so mm -hmm. are you excited about the remake? I am excited. I mean, anything Silent Hill usually gets me excited. I mean, I remember playing, I think like Ken said earlier, I played Silent Hill 2. And to this day, I think it's my favorite ever video game. So here's proof that you can like Silent Hill Revelation and still like the video games as well. I'm the living yeah. proof of that, I think. Because uh, I didn't think anybody else out there could exist that likes Silent Hill Revelation and still likes the video games. So mm -hmm. here we go. Here I am. Um, but but yeah, I am looking forward to Return to Silent Hill. If it comes, I mean, I, I feel like it's supposed to be coming out soon, but I've not heard any updates or anything on it or, any, or seen any trailers yet. I know it's supposed to be coming out midway through the year, so it should be. We should be getting a trailer here soon, but yeah. I would love um, to just see where they go with this. Well, I mean, the way they ended it was so, like, you know, just, like, what's happening here? Well, from what I've heard, Return to Silent Hill is, it doesn't reference oh, either one of these first one of them, so it's like From what I've heard, this is just its own its okay. own universe, its own film. Now, I can't speak to the accuracy of that, guy. so if this is in some way connected with these movies, please don't crucify me. Please don't quote me. You know how internet, you know, lines are. Yeah. I know the internet never lies, but um, <laughs> we all know how that goes. So, um, and I do got to let you know, Ashley and I actually took our kids on a trip. We went to Centralia. We did. And got to see some of the inspiration for, you know, the first game and stuff like that. You know, the, wow. the burning city and. Yeah. Um, the abandoned um, I-95. Is it I-95? I think it's I-90. No, I-95. I-95, yeah. Uh, the abandoned road. Um, and it's all just like it's it's amazing, man. Yeah. It's really cool because you can see smoke coming out of the ground, and you can see why Silent Hill was influenced by Centralia, you know, mm -hmm. and the the mine fires that happened there. It was a really cool place to go. And um, if you're ever on this side of the pond, uh, you should check it out, man. I think as being a big Silent Hill fan, I think that you would really, really enjoy going to Centralia. I think it's something you would really, really enjoy. Ooh. Um, now we do want to rank this movie, obviously. Mm -hmm. Uh. Now that it's in defense of, we're going to be ranking out of 10 skulls and just what this movie means to you, you know, going with acting, production, score, direction, you know, being a critical here, what would your ranking be zero to 10 skulls? Mm, the film critic in me versus the, just the fan, I guess, it's very difficult, this one. Um, realistically, I don't think I could, the film critic in me could give this more than a six out of 10 I'd say 5.5 .5 is where I'd land, I think, with it, if I'm going to be exact, because that's my enjoyment of the film versus the film critic in me realising that the film has lots of flaws. But the enjoyment factor is so much, I can't give it less than a 5. So I'm going to say 5.5 .5 out of 10. Well, I mean, that's higher than the yeah, audience yeah. score. So what would you say? Um, I think I would give it a 5 out of 10 as well. Um, It's fun. And I I love the monster, especially Pyramid Head. I think he yeah. looks so cool. So wish we could have got a little more of him. Yeah, me too. But I, I'm I, as always, I'm on the low end of the spectrum here. I'm going a little higher than the audience score, though. I'm not going at a three and a half. I'm going to go with a solid four. Um, just because, like I said, even as a kid, even though I didn't like it, it didn't take the route of Silent Hill two. Seeing Pyramid Head, you know, seeing the mannequin spider, seeing these things, it still did something to me. Yeah. Like yes, 
you know, like, because as a kid playing these games, you always wanted to see what they could do with a movie of this. You know, that's what we wanted to see. How could we transfer this into a film? How could we put this on film mm -hmm. and really see it still come to life? So to still be able to see these things come to life, I got to give it a four just on that alone, yeah. because that's how much those monsters meant to me. It's like the first time I heard they were doing a Resident Evil movie. I would still like to get a Resident Evil movie that really goes back to what the first movie was, but <laughs> or first game, I apologize. But either way, I don't get a lot of the hate comes from the Internet gaming community that just says, well, it's nothing like the video game. So I hate the movie. Yeah, you, you got to be able to separate these things. You mm -hmm. know, if they did the exact same thing as the video game, you would know it beat for beat. And then you'd complain that it was too much like the video game. Yeah. And so, I mean, then it would be a very long movie. As, as long as they did the dog and alien ending, <laughs> then I would be fine. Yeah. Um, Tom, so if we're going to do your final defense. Say you have 30 seconds to tell someone why they should watch this movie or rewatch this movie. What would you say to them? Um, okay, well, I think I would say remove any expectations of Silent Hill and uh, the franchise and, and so sort of watch this film more as a fun horror film with uh, some great monster sequences, some really good action sequences um, and, you know, enjoy. And, you know, a good lead performance from um, Adelaide Clemens, which I think makes the film more watchable than it otherwise would be. Um, and I think just give it another chance. If you've seen it once and you didn't like it, maybe like me, it'll actually grow on you over more and more watches. So that would be my final defense. I think enjoyable action film. Mm -hmm. Same with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we went back and rewatched it. I'm not going to lie to you. When you said Silent Hill Revelation, I was like, Ugh. all right. <laughs> not, but yeah, but it wasn't as much as uh, with the Pooh and Honey. Yeah. But that one was like, oh, great. Yeah. But again, this isn't about us. Yeah. This is about you. And we're proud to bring you on to talk about a movie that not a lot of people want to talk about. So, yeah. And we just like to define the positives and see why other people yes. enjoy movies because everybody should enjoy movies. It's art being made and. I'm glad that even, people enjoy them. Even if it's not for us, yeah. we hope there's an audience for it. And, you know, yeah. we're never going to I think one of the like, why do you like this movie? Yeah, like, that's ridiculous. No. Like, Unless I, it's The Exorcist too. But um, <laughs> <laughs> the, the only thing for me is, like, I, I hope, like, one of the saddest things I could imagine is someone creating art that wasn't loved by anybody. Yeah. Uh, that to me is the most heartbreaking, sad thing I can think of as mm -hmm. a human being. And so if there's art being created out there, whether it's music, movies, painting, yeah. whatever, I hope there's an audience for it, even if that audience is not us. Yeah, absolutely. I would never wish for an artist to have their art unloved. And yeah. the fact that we can bring people on and talk about art that isn't well loved and talk about the love that people have for it. This is so special to Ashley and I. Yeah. And everyone has their own opinions and everyone likes what they like. I mean, even you and I, we disagree on a lot of things, but um, it's like all in good fun. Yes. So. And that's how it should be. Because yeah. if we all felt the same way, Tom, I think you'll agree with me on this. There'd be no reason for us to do YouTube. Yeah. It'd be, be pretty no boring. To to the podcast yeah. Because we'd yeah. all have the exact same feelings. So um, I know that's, we said it at the, the beginning, fun. guys. No, go ahead. What, what was that? Yeah, that's where the fun is sometimes, isn't it? The difference right. of views and, Absolutely. and finding what you like and someone else likes and, and seeing how it sort of goes together or doesn't go together. It's great. Yeah. Right. Just be respectful and don't be a dick about it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. think that's asking too much. You know, respect other people. I mean, like, yeah. I, I like Halloween and I'm right and you like Friday the 13th and you're wrong. <laughs> Just kidding. No, we're going to have a spot. We're going to have spousal abuse. No, Ashley beat me up in front of Tom. Um, I like Halloween. <laughs> So uh, I know I said it at the beginning, guys, but I do want to remind you all of Tom's social media links are down in the description. So make sure to follow on social media. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube because you're going to want to build that family with him as well. Check out all the things he does because, like I said, he has a lot of feathers in the cap, whether it's reviews, rankings, uh, music reviews as well. So he doesn't stick to one thing. He really broadens his horizons to do a lot of things. So, um Tom, we do want to say thank you for coming on and defending this movie with us. But please don't go anywhere, my friend. We got a couple more questions for you. Um, everyone else, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. It helps to build the channel more than you know. And follow Sledgehammer Horror on social media. Our links are down in the description as well. But until next time, keep talking horror. Stay who you are. And we'll see you guys soon. Guys. Nice.